Hello, I'm Laura Painter. At ABC 10, we stand for you. That means we give you context, depth, and advice to help you and your loved ones navigate this changing world. Here's a collection of stories our team has been working on. For years, California was eager to subsidize solar panels and other similar upgrades. Typically, when it comes to going solar, you have to pay more upfront, while subsidies and long-term efficiency savings made the investment worth it over time. But now, that mentality is shifting as incentives from private utility companies like PG&E go away. Here's my investigation looking at the cost of going green. I said I want to put as many panels as we can on the house so that we can keep our electricity bill down. Cindy and Paul Harmon have lived in their Auburn home for more than three decades, raising their kids, growing their garden, and installing dozens of solar panels in an effort to go green and reduce costs over time. When our system gets cooking and the days get longer, we don't pay anything for electricity. At all. Many homeowners, like the Harmons, have bet on the long-term savings of going solar. But now, the math of going green is changing. Typically, when solar customers generate extra electricity, they can store it in a battery or sell it back to the power grid. If they sell it, their utility company would give them a credit, lowering their energy bill. But a unanimous vote by the California Public Utilities Commission in 2022 that took effect April 2023 cut solar incentives dramatically leaving new solar customers with smaller credits from private utilities by at least 75%. There are lots of benefits that used to be counted when we looked at the costs and benefits of solar, and the PUC completely changed that calculation, so much so that they slashed the payments that people who have solar on their rooftops get for extra power that they sell back to the system. And that made it economically not feasible for a lot of businesses and California families. Now, many homeowners question whether those savings and subsidies that made the transition to solar possible still balance out the higher upfront costs. I sat down with former CPUC Commissioner Loretta Lynch for answers. Why would the CPUC vote in favor of that? I think that the regulator has become the regulated. They are just too cozy with PG&E, and when PG&E says jump, instead of saying why, they say how high. I reached out to PG&E about the CPUC vote. They say, quote, incentives need to be fair and equitable for all customers. Because of the state policy, non-solar residential customers today pay 15% more per month to subsidize the electric bills of those with rooftop solar panels. The CPUC said in December 2022 that, quote, the decision improves the pricing structure and credits to new rooftop solar customers of PG&E, Southern California Edison, and San Diego Gas and Electric. The new tariff supplements and bolsters federal incentives, and the decision has no impact on existing rooftop solar customers maintaining their current compensation rates. Although the new metering rates only apply to new solar customers who started solar after April 2023, solar customers like the Harmons will be subject to the new rates 20 years after their solar system was first turned on. What's the incentive to go solar if you're not going to get enough money to make it worth your while? The Harmons have already seen what it's like to pay more for electricity. A few years into their solar use, the Harmons say their solar system was broken for more than seven months. They say they paid hundreds of dollars more for their utilities during that time. So that shows you when you don't have solar and you're getting billed for electricity at the high rates, you're paying a lot more. Solar advocates like Bernadette Del Chiaro with the California Solar and Storage Association oppose the change in incentives from private utility companies, saying it makes solar unaffordable. It was a steep reduction in the value and it took effect basically right away. And so there was no adjustments uh, to the industry. And so it, the result of that, consumers predictably stopped going solar. Our market is down 60 to 80 percent. In 2006, California launched a Million Solar Roofs initiative, jumpstarting the clean energy industry in the wake of rolling blackouts and the Enron scandal. By 2019, the state hit its Million Solar Roofs goal, calling for a new goal, one million solar batteries. A year prior, in 2018, State Senator Scott Weiner passed SB 700 to incentivize solar batteries through consumer rebates managed by the CPUC. But solar advocates believe progress stopped under the Newsom administration, who appoints commissioners to the CPUC. They say since 2022, some incentives have been slashed for homeowners, businesses, schools, and more. It's very un-California. 
it's hard to even recognize California right now when it comes to clean energy policy. We used to be the world's leader when it comes to solar energy. People look to us for how to build a vibrant, affordable, diverse market. The change in incentives has impacted thousands of jobs and dozens of businesses have closed or left the state. The question right now for the solar industry of California is, have we hit rock bottom yet? Or is there more decline to come? In 2020, California mandated all new home builds must have solar panels on them. This has added tens of thousands of dollars to the cost of a new home. Solar advocates argue with less solar incentives, those homeowners are now shouldering those added costs for longer. While solar is still a really good investment, you have to wait longer for the system to pay for itself, right? The whole idea is you save on your utility bill and the upfront cost of the solar system pays for itself over time. Del Chiaro says it used to take about five years to have your solar system pay for itself. But now she says that range is about 10 years. For a lot of consumers, that's just too long to wait. What would you say to homeowners, businesses, consumers who are struggling with solar, trying to make it pencil out? I would say still give it a good fair shake. Take a look, see if it works for you. Some payment options include leasing your solar, rolling your solar into your mortgage, or third party financing if you don't have equity. What do you think is the right path for California and solar companies? We need to be putting solar wherever it's possible. Let's go solar with or without the PUC, and then let's change out the people who are standing in the way of really reaching our climate goals. As for the Harmons, they're bracing for any changes that may come their way, but worry about other customers and the future of solar. What is the incentive? If you're going to penalize people for getting solar, why get solar? And where's the argument that we are green California when you're doing things like this? I want to note, California isn't the only state to change solar incentives. Nevada's utility regulators approved restoring retail rate net metering for their existing customers. In Arizona, a state Supreme Court ruling ended up sparing thousands of homeowners who leased their solar from paying state property taxes on it. Solar advocates say rulings and votes like these could point California back in the right direction. I will, if I ever have any issues again, I will definitely be getting in contact with you guys. That viewer from Oakdale says the California DMV owed him hundreds of dollars in a refund, and it took 10 on your side getting involved to get him his money back. David English purchased this motorcycle from Nevada, but he says trying to get it ready for the road here in California was a big headache. I, I got it home and couldn't wait to ride it, but I couldn't ride it for two months. I had to sit in my garage while I waited for them to get the, the pink slip, so... It was really frustrating. He wrote this email to 10 on your side explaining this has been an issue since last August. I purchased a motorcycle from a dealer in Nevada. I found information on the California DMV site that states a vehicle purchased from out of state must have the fees paid within 20 days of bringing the vehicle into California. But since I didn't have the title yet, the DMV rep told me she could not collect the fees. And it says right there on the website that if, if you don't have the paperwork, go ahead and, and start the registration anyway, get the, the fees paid, which is what I tried to do. They wouldn't let me. He could only pose for pictures with his motorcycle. When he finally received the title from Nevada 60 days later, he went to get his license plate and pay the fees. They just give me a total that I owed, which I, I went ahead and gave him a check for that, didn't question it, and didn't realize until about a month later that, that I had penalties on there, like $250 worth of penalties. And it was all for not registering on time. But since English says he had tried to pay on time and was denied, he immediately requested a refund. They were just ignoring it completely, so I didn't know where else to turn. David says he saw how 10 on your side got a full almost $500 refund for viewer Scott Sheedy, who was charged twice for his vehicle registration by the DMV. And he decided he too would reach out to 10 on your side for help. I didn't know where else to go. You know, I, I tried everything I could try. I tried the Better Business Bureau. I tried uh, small claims court. And they said you can't uh, file a claim against the state. Uh, so I was, I was getting nowhere. Ten on your side made one phone call, and 24 hours later, we got results. Yes, they reached out to me, the, I guess, the day after you had talked to them. Yeah, they were really, really, uh, you know, helping out once you talk to them. You must have some power. <laughs> a DMV spokesperson released this statement saying, in part, I contacted Mr. English this morning and apologized to Mr. English for the inconvenience that was brought upon him regarding his refund request.
In, in fact, I did get a letter in the mail today from them, which I was surprised how quick it came. And it said that they were in the process of creating the check and it would take maybe a couple weeks. In just the last two months, we've helped viewers get more than $700 in refunds from the DMV. And ABC 10 is here to help you as well. Do you have a problem and don't know where else to turn? Email me at onyourside at abc10.com. Time now for Dollars and Cents, where I answer your money questions and help you navigate a changing economy. California wants to pay doctors more to persuade them to see more Medi-Cal patients. More than 15 million Californians rely on Medi-Cal, almost 40% of the state's population. Experts I talked with say the rates Medi-Cal pays doctors have not kept up with growing demand, and this could not only be hurting your wallet, but also your health. I got exposed to being needing uh, classes since I was about five years old. Helping patients from all walks of life see the world to their fullest is one of the reasons Dr. Payman Ashnasari got into optometry. I think we take sight for granted, so knowing that each day I'm, I'm helping people see to their greatest potential. He runs Arden Park Optometry in Sacramento. He sees about 16 patients a day and they include just about everyone from kids to grandparents and working professionals. Would you like to be able to see more patients? Uh, I would love to. I mean, as a small business, I think, you know, in a business that we serve the community each day, for us, we want to serve and help the community. So for us, definitely, yes. But when it comes to accepting patients covered by Medi-Cal, he says he simply can't afford it. In fact, he stopped taking them altogether. The reimbursement rates for a Medi-Cal Medi eye exam um, is very low and it makes it difficult for a small business owner like myself to accept a patient that where the reimbursement is very low. Medi-Cal is California's Medicaid health care program, a government-funded health insurance program for people with low incomes or disabilities. What's occurring though is as costs are going up, the state contribution is not in line with those costs. As a result, doctors helping Medi-Cal patients aren't getting paid as much as they would on the open market. Therefore, Practices like Arden Park Optometry are disincentivized from taking on Medi-Cal patients. And that means we have a limited area, uh, limited amount of providers for these lower income folks in order to get their medical services. Keith Taylor, an economics professor at UC Davis, says this is hurting rural communities especially hard. He says some people, for example, have to travel 90 miles for eye care or for go care altogether. Oh, it absolutely could be life-threatening for preventative care. The California Optometric Association says the state's reimbursement rate has not increased in more than two decades. Adding Medi-Cal's reimbursement for a new patient eye exam is $47, while the average cost for a patient with no insurance is $200. I think what's stopping me from seeing more people is actually people in the Medi-Cal community, and I'd love to be able to help that community more. I think a lot of optometrists want to see Medi-Cal patients like myself, but because of the low reimbursement rate, it makes it a huge challenge for as a business to take those type of patients. Experts say this problem isn't new. They say years of state budget struggles have hindered efforts to increase Medi-Cal reimbursements, despite constant calls to do so. But just last year, California increased a tax on managed care providers. The state has said it plans to use that money to increase the rates for doctors. But remember, this comes against the backdrop of the $27 billion deficit the state faces right now. If you're looking for something fun and cost-effective to do with the family this summer, why not a little road trip? You never know what you'll find on the back roads, especially when gold fever and Bigfoot collide. ABC 10's John Bartell takes us to Siskiyou County to see the remote artist town of Happy Camp. Well, it's the little artist town in Bigfoot country. John Bartell here making a little pit stop in Happy Camp. Gold was the first discovery in Happy Camp. Legend has it that the town was named after prospector James Camp, who found a gold nugget and said it was the happiest day of his life. The other discovery in this area was Bigfoot. Be saying people go, man, you wouldn't believe what I saw. I'm not sure what I saw, but I think I saw something. The mythical creature and the gold rush history inspires artists of all kinds to create whimsical art. That includes Cheryl Wainwright, who co-created this 15-foot tall Bigfoot statue out of old mining equipment. That is from hydraulic mining pipe, and it's from a mine called Muckamuck. Drive down Highway 96 a few blocks from the Bigfoot statue, and you'll find odd yard art just outside Mr. T's workshop. Do you have a name for him, or what do you uh, call him? 
you know, I, uh, w w maybe a whatnot shelf, you know? Drive a little further down Highway 96 and you'll see more Bigfoot art, but if you stop by the Kingfisher Market, you'll see a colorful mural depicting the town's history. And just across the street from the market, you'll find this, the unofficial world's largest dream catcher. It's 113 feet in circumference and uh, 36 feet wide. The dream catcher was the brainchild of artist Dennis Day back in 2006, but after he passed away in 2019, Cheryl and her husband restored the dream catcher in Dennis's honor. From the Klamath River that runs through town to the colorful forest, it's easy to see why so many people are happy in Happy Camp. And maybe if you visit, you'll get some inspiration as well. From the little town of Happy Camp, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. To find more places to visit, find all of John's stories at abc10.com slash backroads. We can send a map straight to your phone to help you plan your next road trip adventure. Just text backroads to 916-321-3310. All these wonderful destinations are also on our ABC 10 Plus app under the Shows tab. Thank you for watching. I'm Laura Painter. If you want to watch more features just like these, stay on our ABC 10 Plus app. There you'll find the latest newscasts and headlines and stay up to date on the weather and see all the great work and stories we tell here at ABC 10. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.